hi. If you're seeing this, this is an experiment. YouTube has given me a live button and has been, you know, trying to get my attention for a while now to go live. And I have just kind of ignored it because I don't have technically enough subscribers to be able to do that. But since they keep bugging me, I thought I'd just, you know, try a little experiment. This is an uploaded video, and so I'll be in the chat watching to see what happens. If somebody shows up, great. We'll have a little chat for 15 minutes. If not, it's just an experiment to see what happens. I'm throwing together some clips from my phone's hard drive to give you something to look at while you hear me blather on. You're going to hear my real-time voice and pacing because, to be honest, I talk probably just as slow as Scott H. And in regular videos that are uploaded, I speed my voice up, as you might know. Here's a little helpful tip for creators and moderators that I found in YouTube's Maze of Help and it's what they suggest when dealing with trolls. And I'll let you read it, you can stop, and if you need more time to read it, but it's really good advice because it comes to YouTube via creator feedback. So this is what creators have said works the best. Ignoring trolls doesn't always um, curb their behavior or discourage them, which is why moderators have the ability to remove comments, time people out, and then finally block them. It's always been my strategy to greet people as soon as I see them in a chat if I'm a moderator in that chat. That lets that person know that somebody sees them and has acknowledged they're there. If it's an unfamiliar username, you know, Joe Blow dot dash N751, uh, that person is you know, you can watch that, what they post, and if it seems off, or if they're typing in all caps, which is considered shouting in text messages, you can be aware, all moderators should be aware and watching when new people you don't recognize log in. Some people, you know, just don't express themselves well and have in chats been blocked or kicked out or whatever by not really paying attention to two or three messages that they've sent before, you know, bringing the hammer or the wrench down on them. This, it's better to let somebody type a few messages before you take an action. And that's why I don't ignore people in chat. It's why I work really hard to greet everybody. I want them to feel welcome. I want them to know that, you know, somebody saw them and knows they're there. That's just you know, being polite. You came into my house, the door was open, and so I want you to know that I see you. So anyway, blocking and removing, in my opinion, is the last thing that a moderator should do. Warnings given to that person should be the first action so that not only that person knows, hey, I saw you and I'm not sure what's going on with you, 
that I saw you, it also lets other moderators know that you are watching a user <clears throat> and they can be alert to potential problems before bringing the wrench down. Lots of misunderstandings are avoided by just doing an extra step or two. So here it's talking about, you know, human kindness and sometimes um, humor or kindness will smooth over a situation and keep a subscribe, keep a potential subscriber or you might get a potential subscriber just by watching before blocking. So, you know, that's why you see me doing what I do. I don't like to bring the hammer down and just block people. I think that it's actually hurts a channel. We've heard that from one particular channel in the true crime community that every time somebody asks a question, you know, the wrench is brought down on them and then they can't chat anymore. It's, it's a delicate situation. And then I'm going to skip down here a little bit and, and say that it's a creator's responsibility to set boundaries, what you will and will not permit in your chat. And then I'm going to click this open and just scroll so you can see um, what they're talking about. And it's good for subscribers and viewers to know this information so that when, you know, when a situation has to be called out, it's very clear to everybody who participates regularly in a chat what the creator will tolerate and what is not acceptable on that creator's channel. One example that you guys have never seen because I never go live um, is this business of spam filters and naughty word filters. I have a pretty strong word filter on my both my comment section and my chat section. So if you try and, you know, type something that's full of swear words, your comment's not going to go through. Google's going to go, oh, wait, that person's acting, you know, in a way that this creator doesn't want in her chat or comments. We just won't even let the comment go through. And that happens. Other people who have filters, spam filters on their comments and chat that happens automatically don't get mad at the mods and say the mods are going crazy if if there's a filter involved <clears throat> so here the last part of this is all about blocking and reporting a channel or um, reporting on privacy concerns so and it goes through even more. It talks about, um, you know, when an interaction feels like it was heavy handed. And again, I try really hard when I'm modding for someone not to be heavy handed. Um, and, and in the case of Nana's Angels, I screenshotted if I had if I had enough time to grab a screenshot I screenshotted what I felt was objectionable or escalating or whatever and sent it to Nana so she could see why I did what I did and she never had a problem with it 
because I went the extra step. Now, if another mod brought the wrench down before I could get a screenshot, there was nothing I could do about it because in the live chat replay, she wouldn't be able to see the interaction. The username would not show up and, you know, she'd have to take my word for it. So I had to establish a practice of trying not to be heavy handed and trying to get a the user in question to correct their behavior before a wrench came down on them. So that's a little bit about you know modding and why you see me do things the way that I do them. I would rather keep a brand new chatter for the channel and make them a friend of the channel and get them to subscribe for that channel than just, you know, swing that wrench and make people mad at the channel creator. And in this case, you know, it was Nana. I didn't want to lose subscribers for Nana. I wanted to make subscribers for Nana. I also wanted to tell Nana's audience and visitors how much we appreciate your comments on our channels, on our shorts, on the visitor information for Nana's memorial service. I will make sure that the family gets to see those comments and that support in hard copy. It may take a little while after things settle down, but I want them to see every comment that you have posted on the videos that are mine or my community wall or what have you. You all may or may not have caught their pop-up lives where they told us how much they appreciated the support and that it's helped them be able to um, manage getting through this week. And I also want to say to you that have come to my channel and done those things that you've helped me be able to cope and be able to think clearly enough to, you know, put together the short that gave all the information, to put together the first little post that I did that was sleep well. Those things really helped me. And in turn, I've been able to help my fellow mods. You know, I've been able to kind of keep them going. That's not going to last forever. I'm, I'm going to go through a grief process just like everybody else. But at least temporarily, I was able to do my job effectively. And let me give you another piece of inside baseball between Nana and I. She hated it when I said something like doing my job. She absolutely hated it, and she would yell at me and say, Don't say that. It's your channel, too. And so eventually we made peace when I said to her, Fine, I work for the channel, if that makes you happier. And she accepted that, and, you know, it was smoothed over and it was never an issue again. But what I've come to realize is that whatever the reason was that Nana recruited me as a mod and we didn't know each other. We only, she only knew me through comments I left on her video. But for whatever reason, she asked me to come and mod for her. And so I did. But she didn't realize the skill set that I brought to the table because I don't talk about my personal life in my produced videos. I'm talking about a subject, whatever the title is. It's Summer Wells. It's a missing child. It's a missing adult. It's, you know, all the DIY stuff I stopped doing for the most part um, 
for about a year and a half, and it, of course, has picked up again this year because I feel like I'm um, able to handle the process of shooting and creating things to bring to my channel because it's always been a multi-genre channel. So now we've gone over 15 minutes. When have I ever stuck to my 15-minute schedule? Nevertheless, thank you for coming and hanging out with me for this little experiment. And I want to leave you with this image. This is an image that reminds me of Nana. And I'll tell you why sometime soon. In the meantime, I'm going to sign off with what I always say to you. Thank you so much for joining me for this little experiment. God bless you. And even though I'm going on hiatus, probably the beginning of next week, I will still be in comments, but I just won't be producing videos because I know I need some time. God bless you. And I'll see you real soon in the comments.